It's Stan with de Service Detailing again, coming to you from my workshop. Today we're going to do a tool review. I just purchased a brand new airless sprayer. And no, I'm not sponsored by any of these uh, companies that I may do tool reviews on. I'm just wanting to be able to let people know the truth about the tools that I use in my business <clears throat> and how good and the pros and cons of, 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 of the product. So today's video is about the Graco TC Pro cordless. We're going to unbox it and then we're going to demonstrate it and maybe on another video. Anyway, it comes with a nice carrying case. Comes with the cap, the wall battery charger, the gun with a TC Pro tip. Can't make that out. Looks like 10L 20A. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> 514 tip. So I will be using, when I do demonstrate this, I will be using the uh, 409 tip, so it's a little bit smaller. Weight, not too bad. Of course, the battery's not on there right now. May have to charge the batteries. Your instruction manuals. And I'm assuming these are the batteries. It feels, it looks like about the right size. One battery. Two batteries. And these batteries has an indicator where you can test to see if it's got any power. This one's on one bar, so this one has to be charged. The other one, one bar. So this one has to be charged before I can even use it. Okay. <clears throat> it also got some, comes with a small bottle of, uh, um, prime armor it looks like four ounces uh, comes with a filter and two extra caps comes with four liner cups now these liner cups you can use them probably about five times wash them out in between each use until they start getting kind of soft and then the cup of the gun itself. Extra piece of foam. Pretty uh, self explanatory. I'm going to have to charge the batteries. I should have done that before I open it. But this thing is actually brand spanking new. One of the things I want to go over with you is. Some of the uh, stories I've already heard on this, one of the paint stores I bought, uh, was going to buy this from, said, don't buy it, it's no good. Um, everyone who's ever bought one has returned it due to the fact that it leaks, it drips, it spits, and so forth. But all the reviews I get from um, YouTube videos, they're really great and of course I did buy this at Lowe's so um, they did say that on their reviews were really quite high except for one guy um, actually used a <laughs> lacquer in this gun this is the 590 what is it, 98 dollar gun and this gun is not designed for lacquer products it will melt the everything inside uh, you can upgrade from this one to the next one I think it's 749 
course I don't really want to pay that much of course personally I'd rather to have the um, the corded version but Lowe's um, was out of stock on their website and so I don't know how long it would take to get that in stock but we are going to demonstrate this after the batteries are charged that has nice uh, angles these these points point downward and it just goes up into this slot like so then the cap just twists on seeing which way is the best way that don't look right there you go you want to be able to access this port here so when you have the cups in you can squeeze it up and bring the paint up screws on quite nice so there you have it very simple put together the cleaning should be as simple as that I will be changing the tip out so next time you see that it'll be with the green tip and not uh, the gray tip with a blue top piece all right guys next we want to sand this chair down to prep it to get rid of all the gloss that's on there to get it ready for the next paint job and Here's one of the things I recommend, especially if you're using any of the airless sprayers, is a bucket of water filled up to about oh, a little over halfway. My favorite cleaner, and you just basically, if you have the five, if you have the gallon, you just pour it in there. But you want probably about 10, 15. Works. It smells nice and citrusy. You also need a toothbrush or fine small bristle brush to clean your nasal or tip out with, spray tip out with, because unfortunately they get clogged up because the paint dries so quick and you'll need that. You'll need a mask, preferably a sanding mask is a P95 so you don't get any of the uh, dust in your lungs because you don't know how old that paint is and I do know how old this paint is it's about six years old a pair of gloves uh, I like using microfiber rags to wipe my job down with this helps with cleaning your hands up and cleaning your tools off and all that drop it down in your bucket I'm going to use some 80 grit sandpaper and basically suit up and start scuffing but I want to show you the chair before I actually do scuff get some of the stuff out of the way but I want you to see some of the stuff we have to deal with. You know, you get stuff like that. And like I said, this old chair is old. You got some cracks going on. You can see some more cracking. So when you leave these chairs out in the weather, you don't know how long they're going to hold up. You can see some more. This work that they done when they um, cut the chair and all that you got some pitted areas another crack there and if you can see how this dowel rod is kind of bowled in I'm not sure if you can see that or not to me refinishing it several years ago like I said about five six years ago uh, you can see some of the warping going on on the chair where you know what's been out in the weather you're not seeing a whole lot some areas 
where some paint has if I can get up close enough there you go some areas where you know you got some old chip paint got a nice chip right there see those or not but you got some chipping going on in there another chip spot right in there and so forth so on anyway that's what we got to work with And basically now all you want to do is just scuff the whole thing you know if you got any major repairs get some call and just hand scuff everything get ready to shine that's basically what you want to do just get ready to shine and take your sandpaper when you got your grooves, you fold it over and just kind of clean your grooves out. We got more tension. Man, I don't want to anything. Don't want to worry about it. You don't think that's going to be the case? Don't worry about it. You know, we're good. 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 Sometimes you'll have to reposition your sandpaper. So you have a fresh new line to work with in those tight areas.
I don't know if you can see the difference how shiny that is compared to this. I'm hoping you can. But anyway, you want to make sure that is dull as you can get it. Don't worry about it if you got little grooves down in there. You just want to knock the surface part off. That's why it's called scuffing. Now, take the toothbrush and a rag and wipe all the dust off. I know some of you guys like to just blow it off, but no offense, you can't get down in these little cracks. And that dust is still there, believe it or not. Boy, too bad there's not smell of vision. That smells like an orange. Sometimes I like to use a paintbrush to help get rid of some of the dust. Especially on the bottom here where it's just rough lumber that didn't sand it down nice and pretty. Smooth, so it's really textured. But if you don't do this, you ain't, you ain't getting that dust out of there. And that's going to take care of the back. Uh, the chair's done sanded and ready for paint. Uh, I got one battery charged. I'm fixing ready to charge the other one, so I make sure I have enough to do this job with because I don't know how long that gray coal sprayer will last. But yeah, this is going to be a two part series. One, how to paint a rocking chair, and the gray coal review. So, okay, guys, now's the time to use some caulk to caulk up any cracks holes anything you want to do to fill in to make it look a little bit better and here's a little trick for you a little tip take a wire nut and keep your caulk gun from drying out and just put a little bit on there fill in your, your excess cracks stuff like that wipe it off you know, try to make it as nice looking as you can. Paints will fill in some smaller ones. Now, I don't think this is going to have any problems with the um, the rocking chair before me. Some people might say, well, you know, you need those cracks so it can move and do what it needs to. Well, with some good caulk, which I'm using to this brand here, and I'm not I'm not being sponsored by them at all. It is what I like to use. And 
and wipe it smooth. You don't have to wipe it off with a, uh, a rag. You just don't want no lines or stuff like that through it since you're spraying. And if you're brushing, you know, you can get by with a little bit more. Personally, I like using gloves when I'm caulking. This way it doesn't get on your hands or anything. And it also helps move the caulk out so it's not as noticeable. Alright, I'm going to show you how to set up your Graco machine. First, I want to apologize for the fan going. It's done got hot in the shop. So, us big boys had to have air flowing. Anyway, the product I like to use the most is Breakthrough by PPG. And one reason I'm buying this Graco machine is so that I can spray cabinets with it. And what I like about this is the fact that it has a dial. So you can actually go from one all the way up to ten. We're going to start off in the middle at five. My coating is already shaking up. about that <clears throat> just make sure everything's on good and tight and that you put give me a second so I can get it organized here sometimes it's best to back tread then go forward. It's a little hard to do when you're trying to show it on the camera. All right, and make sure that's on there good and tight. Now, you see this nipple, I know you've done seen all these videos, you want to ooze the paint up and squeeze all that air out. Until you fill that thing up about halfway, then close it. And now, you don't have no air in your thing, and you should be able to spray upside down let's see if it's leaking I don't see no leaks now I'm gonna give it a we're gonna move over here so I can test to get get the, the spray pattern right okay now before you spray you do want to put it in the prime mode for about five seconds until you get your paint come out That's on five, that's pretty potent. Drop it down to four. Four looks good too for this Cody. But like I said, I already got it thinned down pretty good. Three's good too. Let's go with three. And we'll go with three and see how well it does. And I'm gonna show you a few things over here. Now I don't know if you can see but it's best to always have an exhaust fan set up and running so when I get ready and spray it's going to get kind of kind of uh, over spraying in here and really loud with both fans going so 
I do recommend that you wear gloves. Don't have to, but you'll get it on your hands if you don't. And I done used these gloves when I was sanding, done cleaned them. Maybe we're not supposed to reuse them right now in the situation in the uh, world we're living in today. And yes, I will be wearing my respirator on this one. This coating is a VOC zero, zero VOCs, but it's got a ammonia type smell to it. So I do recommend any spray jobs you do, you wear these. You don't want that in your lungs. I also recommend you keep a little handheld roller on hand for runs and that way if you catch them while they're wet you can get them out if you miss them and you catch them a little bit later you can use a little bit of water and rub it down with your finger and cause it to disappear but if not you'll have to wait 20 minutes for this coating to dry because it's 20 minutes in between coatings for it to dry before you can sand that and um, fix it Okay, I also noticed over there on number five, the, at the top where I started run, going, I do have runs. This coating is very, very, breakthrough is very difficult to spray. And it takes a while to learn how to spray it. This coating was actually mixed up for my uh, turbine spray system I have that I use to try to get the cabinets as smooth as I possibly can. But it's because it is the um, Titan cap spray 115 it puts out 10.5 uh, psi it gets extremely extremely hot and it's blowing hot air through the gun which uh, heats up the coating which actually helps autumn atomizes it properly but downside is with the breakthrough because it dries so fast is it wants to kind of dry it on there before and the little droplets are hardening up before they even get to the surface so sometimes you'll get the, a light texture feel, and if you know anything about cabinets, you have two styles. Well, you got three styles. You got your stain, you got your painted cabinets. Then on the painted cabinets, you have two styles. You have a smooth finish, and you have a texture finish. And it takes a long time to work with Breakthrough to get a very, very fine, smooth finish, so it looks right. If you want smooth finish. So I'm, that's why I'm about the Graco is to try to get a smoother finish on my products. I got a bigger airless uh, Graco, the uh, Pro 17. I like it, but even with the breakthrough not being thinned at all, just straight from the can, it still runs with it. And I've adjusted the settings, I don't know how many times, but that thing's 3,000 PSI max setting. This thing's 1,000, so I'm hoping that's going to work. I'm going to go turn the fan on and I will drop the volume in the video when I record it or edit it so it's not so loud but we want to start pouring the fumes out and I'm just you basically going to get to watch me spray now and then after I'm done spraying I'll, I'll go over some tips with you about how it sprayed and how it felt and all that. I'm going to try to put three coats on here and 20 minutes in between each coat so we're going to hit the bottom first and work our way up.
little bit of dripping going on. for that like I said I got it thin pretty about half and half the water and the coating I'm gonna make that sit I might have to go to one setting I'm on I, I dropped it down to two so we're gonna let that sit 20 minutes then we're gonna come back and look at it again and yeah I'm gonna have to clean my camera up I got paint dust all over it I knew that was gonna happen But this is, I'm, all, I'm painting the rocking chair, which is going to look good, which it looks really great, but I'm still getting those runs. I don't know how well it'll work with the thicker material without being thin. I'm well pleased with what I'm seeing. Uh, we'll, let it, we'll let it dry. I'll hit a few more runs. Then we we'll throw a quick, I'm probably going to have to spray it really fast to keep it from running. That's the only thing bad about breakdown. If you put it on too thick, it's going to run. Even if you water it down, it's going to run even more.
okay it's already starting to tack up so i'm going to stop rolling here but if you keep rolling it's going to end up ripping the paint off and then you really have a bad spot to try to repair i'm going to let that sit for about 20 minutes then i'll come back and we'll move on okay guys it's been 20 minutes it's done tacked up ready for a second coat this time they recommend about 12 inches i think i'm going to try to do 15 and spray faster to keep the runs from happening let's see how this coat works it's coat number two Sorry about that. I uh, had to stop the uh, camera because the battery died. I had to go charge it. I done put the three coats all over the rocking chair except for this area here. And of course running out of rockers. Which that ain't going to really matter because it's probably going to rock off over time. But that's what we're getting ready to do now. Just finish that up. Then I'll talk to you about how well the Graco uh, TC Pro cordless done and so far so good be right back it's gonna get loud again Let that dry 20 minutes, come back, flip it, and do the other side. Okay, guys, I done flipped the rocking chair again. We're going to do it again on this side. That'll be the last coat there, and then we'll clean up in about 20 minutes after I spray. This won't take about five seconds. Okay, it's sprayed. I'm gonna give it 20 minutes. I'm gonna set the rocker off of there and then we're gonna clean the gun up and I'll show you how easy it is to clean the great co up. Okay, now after you get through your, with your project, it's really simple to clean this. Okay, like I said, now we're going to clean the gun and I'm going to show you how easy it is to clean the gun. First thing you want to do is remove the cup, hold it on to the cap. She just pops right out, like so. And yes, you're going to have some water dripping. Take your cup, go ahead and let it drain. Okay, I got three buckets of water. 
This one's the original one I had and I told you I like to have. And it's already got paint in it. So it's going to be used to do the minor cleanup. So basically, like we're inside the gun, because you got all that paint in there that needs to come out. Just wash it really good in there. And try to get as much of the thick paint off as you can. Now we're going to be doing some more cleaning. Because we got the cup to do. Alright, that should take care of this. For now. Okay. Now after you put your excess paint back in the can, which in this situation there really wasn't that much, move the can out of the way. Like I said, on these inner liners, you should be able to get about four or five uses out of them. Now, if you're outside with a water hose, it makes things a whole lot easier. But I don't feel like setting up outside and all that. So, just want to give it a good wipe through. going to put it back together add some clean water over from the big bucket tighten that sucker back up Turn your tip Gun's clean. <clears throat> Go ahead and remove your tip. Clean off any excess stuff. Okay. That pretty much cleans your gun up. Go 
and give everything a good wipe down. We want to keep the paint from drying in here as much as possible. Clean that good. Because you don't want no paint causing you problems when uh, your That's good. Like I said, if it dries on there, now I'm probably going to spend more time cleaning than most people will because I'm a sticker about it. Prance it off. Prance this off. Probably going to use the other bucket too to help keep things clean. Now, I don't know if you can see, but there is a filter down in there. You want to keep that from getting clogged up. And you also have this white ring. There. This white ring, this rubber, you want to keep paint off of that. So you want to keep this as clean as you possibly can so that when you seal the gun up, it doesn't give you uh, problems with it dripping around that edge. Okay. Uh, this piece here, same thing. Go ahead and wipe it down. Clean your, your treads out where it screws on because it is plastic and you don't want to cause any problems down the road I mean this thing's almost $600 so you want to keep that sucker as clean as possible and you know if you're like most people you're not going to use this but for whatever jobs whenever you get around doing them me on the other hand I do about hmm, 25 cabinet jobs a year and I want to keep this thing as clean as possible because that's really what I bought this for okay somebody's cutting grass so I got my door open I also like to keep these things clean well, the, the green tips are pretty expensive you'll pay about 30 35 dollars for these depending on where you get them at I think I gave 39 dollars for it this clean mostly the inside parts where everything sticks to
Yeah, and use these liners as much as you can. Probably only about five uses out of it before they tear up. They're not the greatest things in the world. That's pretty much how you clean it. Clean it, and I know I'm not going to be using it um, for a while, so I'm going to run some paint armor down through it, which I recommend everybody to do. You know, if you don't use it every day. Here lately, I've been getting about. Um, oh, what is it? Probably about one cabinet job, uh, uh, a plastic, you know, a month. So, inside pieces right a lot of times if you turn it back the opposite direction it'll line up you can actually usually hear it snap squeeze out the air and in this situation we've got a lot of air squeezed out Prime. Personally, I'd rather just shoot some through. It. That way, I know it's clean. Pop the cap on the side. That's it. You cleaned up. Now, for the review. Yes, I'll give this a five-star rating. I will be going to low since that's where I purchased this at and uh, leaving that review as for the battery one battery fully charged sprayed three coats on the chair and I got two bars left so I only use one bar during the spraying process I'm well pleased with that. Now, it will two batteries um, of those regular batteries be enough to do a 30 door cabinet job? Probably not. Like I said, I like my cap spray gun which I need to do an update on let everybody know how that is and you're, you're going to have to keep armor around I mean primer armor because that's got paint in it so and basically you take this outside and you clean it all up all my buckets up at the water hose and that concludes how uh, the review on this um, Graco TC Pro. I am well pleased with the gun. Very happy with it. Um, the complaints that I heard about it from another paint store, I'm going to say are false. You just got to make sure there's a rubber ring in there. You got to make sure it's screwed down onto this other rubber ring tightly and that it's it's on there as you saw earlier in the video i did have some little bit of dripping but a lot of times if you take it and you start getting it tight then use this to help turn it tighter then 
turn it back to the left tighten it up some more turn it back to the left tighten it up some more okay and it does come loose so and that's about as snug as you want it so that your tip will fit down in there see that's a little too tight You know, the tip's got to go down in there nice and smoothly. So that it'll sit in its place. And then you tighten it up. But you want the tip to where it'll freely spin to unclog it with the, the bigger end, which you should stream out in case your tip gets clogged up. As you see in me in the video, I would stop every time I got through using it and brush out this section. Because what happens is the longer you use this, paint builds up and it clogs it up. So it's easier, you know, with that small project, it's easier to, to take care of it. On a larger project, like I'm doing a whole set of cabinet jobs or whatever, then I'm going to have to um, watch for it because it's probably going to clog up throughout the job. That's they all they all will do that, <clears throat> especially with the paint you're using. Uh, I think you can keep it clean. It's going to last many many years. Um, I also have heard leaking from this this be dripping and stuff, and I'm like, you know. this dry and um, I got some bonus features for you here in a little bit to see if you can guess what the next video will be about all right <clears throat> I'm back with the bonus footage one of my next videos will be about what's under this plastic bag so with the video you just watch please like or dislike give me a thumbs up or thumbs down whichever one you want to do I think it's in that corner no it's in this corner I get it right in a minute down there you know it'd be down there somewhere below this thing and um, if you want to watch the prep work of the uh, chair uh, rocking chair you can go over here to this video and it'll show you how I fixed it and repaired it. We'll see how well it holds up. This one's going to be kind of like a two-parter uh, cross between a Greco review slash painting a rocking chair. Let's combine it all together and be done with it. Now, for this item, in the comments below, Say what do you think this is. Let me know what do you think this is. I've got my work cut out for you. I'm going to end the video with some close-ups of this. <clears throat> and we'll catch you next time.